long ago, way back in the before time, I worked for one of those bulk warehouse club stores. My trade was simple. I was a wrangler of the silver buffalo and dutifully retrieved the all ghetto strollers I did. The job in and of itself wasn't the worst I'd ever had, I got plenty of exercise, got to be outside, and generally didn't have to interact with the members, calling them customers was taboo, for the most part. For the most part. The thing about this job is that the company I worked for had a reputation for being cheap. Thusly, more often than not, I was on my own out in the parking lot. Big whoop, you might say. You gathered carts? You should see how hard my job is. Yeah, well shut up. This is my story. I digress. The reason that being alone sucked is that this store didn't have just one kind of cart. Hell, they didn't even just have two kinds of carts. You had your classic garden variety cart, the kitty cart with the plastic facade to make it resemble a car, the electric scooters, which weren't supposed to leave the store, but did so with alarming frequency, and finally, the bulky, hard-to-control flatbeds. On top of that, whenever someone needed help loading their haul into their minivans, I was the guy they called. You know, because the greeters, cashiers, and managers were all busy. As you might expect, one man cannot be in multiple places at once, and as a result, on some of our busier days, it became incredibly difficult to keep enough carts in the vestibule. Our story begins on one of these days. So there I was, chugging along like a good worker drone, struggling to keep up with the sheer volume of people coming in to buy cheap bulk goods. Sure enough, I get a call on the radio. Manager. OP? We need you to help some members load their purchases. Me. Uh, I'd love to, but I'm barely able to keep up out here as is. Manager just do it, OP. You can afford to stop gathering carts for two minutes. Ron Howard. He couldn't. I didn't want to push my luck, so I complied. After spending 20 minutes loading people's purchases because when one person needs it, suddenly they all need it, I came back to find my vestibule in a near ghost town, save for a single line of carts that was half gone, and the Karen. I won't waste time describing this specimen. She was the prototype. You know what she looked like. There she stood, menacing, tapping her foot with such speed that could make any metal drummer green with envy, you could collect the contempt in her gaze in a jar. Karen. Where are the big flat ones? I blanked for a moment. Me. I'm sorry? Karen. Ugh. Mexicans. For the record, I'm very much white. Karen. Where are the flat ones? Me. Oh, you mean the flatbeds. I'm sorry, I was just helping some other members load their merchandise and haven't had a chance to. Karen. Oh my god, I don't care about your excuses, you have one job and a trained. Monkey. Could do it. I just want this lady out of my face, so I don't fight it. Me. Sorry ma'am. I'll grab one from the parking lot for you. Karen. You'd better. So I go back out to the lot and find a whole line of flatbeds sticking out of a corral blocking several parking spaces. I push them all into the vestibule where she waits, huffing about how I'm wasting her valuable time. I separate one from the rest and bring it to her. Me. I'm terribly sorry about the wait ma'am. She leers at me with utter malice. Karen. HMMPH. Unbelievable. And with that, she dismisses herself into the store, where she will be someone else's problem. I shake my head and return to doing what I'm paid to do. About 15 minutes later, I'm returning a line of carts when I see her pushing her flatbed to her Miata and jawing about stupid people, most certainly referring to me, on her cell phone. Do you know what she bought? What she had insisted on having a flatbed for? A cake. This wasn't even like, a big cake. It was one of those little circular numbers. Anyways, I witness as she continues to yammer on about how I nearly ruined. Ruined I tell you. Her precious baby's birthday party when the most glorious thing happened. Still clutching her phone with those Jaya Lie scoop claws of hers, she attempts to pick up the cake with one hand, the plastic topper pops off, and she spills the cake all over her undoubtedly expensive designer outfit. Seething with white hot rage, she locks eyes with me. Karen. You. Get me another cake. Now. Me. Terribly sorry ma'am. I've got one job, and these carts won't gather themselves. I walked away, a crap-eating grin plastered on my face as her shrieks faded into the distance behind me. I've had my share of nasty customer interactions before, but this one really took the cake. You've been waiting a long time for that pun haven't you? OP. Since time immemorial. You stole my line. I was gonna say that. Still, the mishap was the icing on the cake. 
your retort? Sweet as cake. OP. It was one of my better moments. Usually, I do suffer from staircase wit, but this was one of the few times in my life I had the right comeback loaded. Let's start from the beginning. It was my very first semester as a college freshman. I officially moved into my college dorm to start this new chapter of my life. I'm an international student so it was a tough experience once reality settled. Thankfully I had my cousin whom I haven't seen in years and his wife who lived in Dallas helped me with getting a US number, bedding, and school supplies. Fast forward to Thanksgiving break. I accepted my cousin's offer to go to Dallas for the break since it was better than staying in the dorms. I met his two kids, a son and a daughter. We catch up with each other seeing how our lives went up to that point. The break ended and went back to college to study for finals. Then it happened. My cousin's wife asked for a favor via text. The favor? Take their eight-year son home back to the Caribbean with me because his godmother wanted to see him. I told her that wasn't able to do that because I didn't know when my exams were finished. I actually did know when. I just told her that so she would leave me alone or do something herself. I already made up my mind with my mom's support that wasn't doing that. Fast forward weeks later. I was chilling in the airport minding my own business when my good cousin called me. He asked if I was doing something for his wife. I told no and explained myself. He thanked me and I thought that was the end of it. But no. I saw her with their son holding a suitcase and a carry-on when I was walking to my gate. My cousin was nowhere to be seen. I asked her what she was doing. She gave some sob story of how his godmother wanted to see him and told him that he'll be good as he was hugging my leg. I was shocked. I felt my heart trace. The groups were being called and I had to make a decision. Note. I just turned 18 at the time. I barely knew this child. I like to have everything in order and pre-planned to avoid confusion, and this would complicate everything. Furthermore, immigration would be on my case. Finally, I don't know who his godmother is or how she looks. I told her no, stating that if she wanted to do this, they could have planned a family trip together and not dump their kid on me. She said that she already bought the ticket and I might as well take him. I told her no again and went on my flight. My family was proud of me for standing my ground as they didn't like her either. Turn out that sometime after or during the pandemic, my cousin and his wife got divorced. Understandable. His now ex-wife went behind his back trying to get his son on an international flight when they could have planned a family trip together. Well done for not bowing down under pressure. You absolutely did the right thing. I can't fathom what goes on in the minds of people like this I mean, how does that even make sense to anyone? Even if you had agreed I would think you'd need, at least, notarized letters giving you permission to take someone else's minor on an aircraft, let alone to a foreign country. OP. Thank you. It was my first grown-up decision. To be honest, I don't know how people like her function. She's basically putting her son in the hands of a stranger. I met the son during my break. Overall she probably only cared about herself. This was almost five years ago so I'm not sure if she had notarized letters. Flying internationally with a child requires documentation, especially when not with immediate family. They probably would not have let him board. And possibly detained you, causing you to miss your flight. OP. That's what I'm saying. My grandpa works for an airline so he knows the rules and regulations. For all I know she probably had some story to say that we're close cousins to avoid using proper documentation and just let us on board. It sounds like she may have been trying to subvert the Hague Convention on child smuggling. Am I the unreasonable one for wanting to use my car when I'm home from business trips? I will say this I don't think my mom's entitled, but rather she had entitled moments. I travel for work, going weeks to months at a time. I have a car but leave it with my mom because she doesn't have one and told her she could use it. Side note. She lives with my dad they are separated and her two grandkids which she cares for. I pay the car note and insurance. Whenever I come home I use that time to get things done like doctor's appointments, dentist, hair, stuff like that. I always do my best to let my mom know my schedule and appointments. So here's what happened. Day 2 home. I had no appointments just wanted to go to the gym, my mom told me she had to take my niece to a club during the time I had planned for the gym. That's fine I understood, so I just went to the gym later. Day 3. Had a doctor's appointment along with a tax appointment. Plans were to go to the gym, go to doctors, then taxes. 
I told my mom about my plans, except for the tax thing because that was new, and I got the appointment the day before. As I'm leaving for the gym my mom asks if I can drop her off so she can get some blood work done. A little miffed because it was a bit out of my way, but whatever. I assumed she was going to walk back because the place is within walking distance of the house. As I drop her off she asks if I can pick her up. When I get her turns out the place was too busy, she didn't have an appointment. She asked what I was doing the next day, and I told her I had a hair appointment. She knew this as I told her before I got home and when I got home. Now she's mad because I need my car to get my stuff done, and she can't find a time to get her blood work done. This seems to happen often when I come home, and I have to accommodate her schedule despite the fact that it's my car and I plan things out in advance and let her know. She ends up getting frustrated and mad which makes me upset too. Seriously, I'm wondering if I'm the unreasonable one in this situation? Not unreasonable, tell her that when you are home assume she doesn't have access to the car, so plan accordingly. Alternatively, she can buy her own car. She has grown entitled to the use of your car because of her free reign of it. She thinks of this car as her car. And you're the inconvenience for using it when you get back. You're going to have to sit down and have a very clear conversation about the actual guidelines of the car. Make your points clear. 1. You pay for the car 100%. 2. When you are gone she is free to use it as it is available and sitting there. 3. When you come home, the car is yours and you expect to use it accordingly. Her schedule will need to be changed and adapted, not yours. Within reason or circumstances. The car is yours. You are letting her use it, you didn't give it to her. If she can't follow the plan, then she can't use your car. Mom, I think I have been quite generous in letting you use my car, since I don't use it that much. But when I am home I am first priority. You need to find another way to get around or have dad drive you. Just assume you cannot use it or ask when it is available and plan around me.